Yo, what up? Damn, this is way too bright. Better. What up, man? You remember this video? There's a lot of misconceptions when it comes to menswear. Some of them are probably holding you back from looking your best. So in this video, we're gonna talk about the seven menswear myths. What about this one? In this video, we're gonna talk about something that's very important, but we don't really talk about it a lot. And I get it because there are a lot of things that are more important than socks. And this one? Back in January, I made a video on my shoe collection. And one question that I got a lot in the comments was how come I don't own any boots or loafers? So why did I say this last week then? The tie, I don't think I've ever worn this tie on this channel. I mean, you guys can correct me if I'm wrong. Now there's a chance I might've worn it another time. I don't think I've worn it any more than that. Lying my ass off, bro. <laughs> I'm getting old, man. I be forgetting stuff, man. Shout out to my guy, Juan Reyes, for pulling my card and setting me straight. I gotta do better. Intro. Yo, what up? My name is Vladimir Riche from ChaseAndRider.com and in this video, we're going to talk about how to step up your shoe game in five easy steps. Let's get it. Number one is understanding fit. This one sounds like it's pretty obvious, but even with myself, I didn't really truly understand my feet until very recently. And that's because when I first started buying shoes, I was getting lucky and all the shoes that I used to get used to fit me pretty well. See, when it comes to dress shoes, you might know your size. Like me, for example, I'm a 7 UK. That doesn't mean that all 7 UK are going to fit you. Some shoes are just not meant for your feet. Or should I say some last are just not meant for your feet, man, they just don't go with your feet. Some guys have feet that can fit many different lasts. I'm not really one of those guys because I have a high end step and I also have flat feet. So it took me a while to realize that because most of my shoes fit me pretty well, so I never really knew I had an issue. I knew that my insteps were kind of high, but as far as me having flat feet, that never even really crossed my mind, you know? The reason why I put this at number one is because it doesn't really matter how nice the shoes are if the shoes don't really fit you. So it's very, very important that you find out exactly what kind of fit you have. Like, do you have a high end step? Do you have a low end step? Do you have regular end step? Do you have flat feet or your arch is regular? All those things you need to know, especially now because most of the shoes that I talk about are not really shoes that you can just walk in and buy. So typically you have to order those shoes online. I did make a whole video about this a couple months ago called how shoes should fit. If you haven't seen it, I'll link it somewhere up here. I'll also include it in the description. In that video, I went more in depth about fit when it comes to shoes, but it's very important that you understand fit so you know exactly what type of laughs are going to go with your feet. It's still not 100% foolproof because nothing beats trying the shoes on in person, but understanding your feet goes a long way in you buying shoes that's going to fit, number one. Number two is keeping your shoes shined. Another one that sounds pretty obvious, man, but it's really not. I see so many guys walking around with decent shoes, but the shoes have no kind of shine on them whatsoever. It's very important that you take care of your shoes, but one thing that really goes a long way is shining your shoes. I mean, you don't have to shine them yourself. If that's not your thing, definitely get someone to shine them for you. Like for example, New York City, there are so many guys on the corners, on the subway shining shoes. Me personally, I like to shine my own shoes. Number one, there's a satisfaction that comes with getting some real shine on your shoes and you did it yourself. But number two and more importantly, is something that's very therapeutic. So if I'm watching TV, I'm watching a game, it's always a nice idea to pull out my shoes and kill two birds with one stone. So while I'm watching the game, I'm also shining my shoes. Shining your shoes does take a long time, but if you're doing it while you're doing something else, you don't even realize how long you've been doing it. So if watching the game is your thing, if listening to a podcast, listening to music, whatever it is that you do, so while you're doing that at the same time, start shining your shoes. So that's what I do personally. And you can be wearing nice shoes, but if the shoes aren't shined, they're not going to be looking their best, you know? So somebody that has shoes that are not as nice as yours, their shoes might look better than you simply because they took care of theirs and you didn't take care of yours. So shining your shoes is a good way for you to step up your shoe game. Number three is very important. And that's something that I just realized myself within the past year. You should definitely diversify your portfolio when it comes to your shoe collection. 
Don't be like me and get nothing but Oxfords, which is what I did when I first started my shoe collection. So that really limits you, man, especially if you wanna wear casual clothing with your shoes. What I did was whenever I had to wear casual clothing, I would either wear my monk straps or I would wear like my suede Oxfords. I mean, those worked, but those aren't ideal. So you should definitely try to diversify your portfolio. You definitely should be getting some Oxfords. You should be getting some loafers. You should be getting some split toe derbies. Definitely should be getting some boots. Don't just get the same thing, have all your shoes look exactly the same, man. I know when it comes to Oxfords, there are plenty of different styles, austerity brogues, punch cap toes, plain cap toes, Adelaide's. But still, man, you should definitely look to have different type of shoes, not just different style of Oxfords. So that's one way, one easy way at least to step up your shoe game, man. But it also depends on your dress code. So if you're one of those guys that wear suits five days a week, then you should be getting more Oxfords because you're going to be wearing suits more. And if you're in the same scenario as me, where you can wear pretty much whatever you want, you should definitely try to get different style of shoes. Once again, take it from me because all my shoes in the beginning were Oxfords. And I wish that when I was starting my collection, I was looking at different style of shoes, not just different types of Oxfords. The fourth thing that you can do to step up your shoe game, this one is an easy one, is to wear flat laces. Yep, flat laces over round laces any day of the week, man. Like I can't really think of a scenario where I prefer to have, or well, maybe with my boots. I think round laces look better with boots, but besides that, whether it's a chucker boot, whether it's a Oxfords, whether it's Anything that you can really think of, man, it always looks better with flat laces. This is a preference thing. Some guys might like their round laces, but I can say I've never seen a pair of shoes look better with round laces than it does flat laces. So if I get a pair of shoes and it comes with round laces, the first thing that I do as soon as I take the shoes out of the box is switch to flat laces. I mean, I've spoken about this before and I do have a lot of guys that typically ask me in the comments where can they get flat laces from. So I'm going to include a couple options in the description, but it's very important to have a stash of flat laces laying around. Like I have a bunch of flat laces in dark brown, just in case if I buy a pair of shoes and it comes with round laces or if one of them snap, I've had that happen also. And um, yeah, man, flat laces for the win every single time. You wouldn't think something so minor would make a difference. It really does make a big difference, man. No exaggeration, flat laces, easy way to step up your shoe game. Now, last but not least, number five, wear suede shoes, man. This one is really a cheat code. Suede shoes just take your shoe game to a totally different stratosphere. Now, what makes suede shoes so crazy? Number one, not that many guys really wear them, so that kind of sets you apart right off the bat. Number two, when you wear suede shoes, people look at you like, this guy is not new to this. He's true to this, you know what I mean? Now, I know some guys reach out to me before and say, should they be wearing suede shoes with their suits? Absolutely, man. Suede shoes are just like leather shoes, just a little bit more casual. Now, if you're not comfortable with wearing suede shoes with your suits at first, one way that I would recommend that you start building your suede shoe collection is by getting your casual shoes in suede. So if you're a guy that like loafers, get your loafers in suede. So that's one way to start dipping your toes, no pun intended, into suede shoes without going all the way to Oxford yet because you don't feel comfortable with wearing suede shoes with your suits. So that's how I would start. If split toe derbies are your thing, and that's why you wear casually, then I would get my split toe derbies in suede. If somebody's into shoes, they're going to notice that your shoes are different from everybody else. And you're going to notice it also, which is the most important part. You're going to feel like, man, I'm really stepping up my shoe game. I'm wearing suede shoes now. So I'm not saying that suede shoes are better than regular leather shoes. They both have their place. Obviously, suede shoes are not as dressy although they still are, depending on the style, of course. There are so many different colors of suede also. I would definitely start with dark brown though, because dark brown happens to be the most versatile probably, but suede shoes are just on a different level. Another feature of suede shoes is you don't have to shine them. I mean, I was saying before, take care of your shoes and keep them shined. Suede shoes, you don't have to do that. But more importantly, suede shoes are very resilient. You don't have to baby them like you do regular leather shoes. You don't have to worry about the rain getting on them and water getting on them. You just have to hit them with some waterproof spray and everything just beats right off, man. Suede shoes are really a cheat code, like I was saying. If you're not into suede shoes, you're definitely missing out. Get yourself some suede shoes. Before we get to what I'm wearing today, last week I got a comment from this dude named X Carthage or X Carthage. I don't know, hope I'm saying your name right, bro. 
But um, he goes, get your fat butt off the seat, Vlad, when you're breaking down what you're wearing today. Hey, let us see the entire fit head to toe. Don't be a hater. Yo, man. <laughs> I really laughed when I read that comment, man. That's really funny. Shout out to my boy X Carthage, wherever you are, man. The last thing I wanna be is a hater. So I'm definitely going to show you guys what I'm wearing from head to toe. The thing is not as simple as just me getting up and showing you what I'm wearing, man. One thing about me when I do something, I like to do it right. A couple times I did do a video where I showed you guys what I was wearing and I really didn't like the way that it came out. And um, something that I've been working on. So let me know in the comments if there's a way that I can improve it. But I think that it came out pretty good. So today I'm wearing my navy flannel suit from Spie & McKay. It's made out of a VBC fabric. VBC is an Italian mill, and this suit is from the fall and winter 2019 collection. And my shirt is a white custom shirt from Spie & McKay. If you're not familiar with this channel, I always include a 20% off code in the description that works for first time buyers of Spie & McKay. Just have to enter it where it says referral code when you are creating your account. My tie is from E.G. Capelli, which is another Italian tie maker. One thing that I love about E.G. Capelli ties is they all come custom. So well, he doesn't really have any of the rack ties. So whenever you go on their website, you select the fabric that you want. Then you also get to specify how wide you want the tie to be, how do you want the interlining to be. All those things make a difference on how the knot is going to look. And Patrizio from E.G. Capelli is a great guy to deal with. So I highly recommend his ties. The pocket square is from Drake's. It's a 70% wool, 30% silk pocket square. And my wood style lapel pen is from Dapper Woodworks. My shoes are my punch cap to Oxford in dark brown from Joe Works. I did do an unboxing for them. If you haven't seen that video, I'll link it somewhere up here. I'll also include it in the description. My beanie is a light gray cashmere beanie from J. Crew. And my top coat is my Ross Polo coat from Spain McKay. So that was how to step your shoe game in five easy steps. Those are mine. I'm looking forward to hearing yours in the comments. Hit the thumbs up if you like this video. Subscribe. Everybody gonna think that you're a hater. And I'll catch you in the next video.